Okay, welcome back to the Investigative Journal on this November 18th, 2015 day on our calendar. I'm your host, Greg Anthony. You're listening to FirstAmendmentRadio.com. And as I say most every day, you can listen to my show every Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. That's on First Amendment radio.com pacific time we got a lot to talk about today i'm going to spend some time again on these uh the paris attacks and uh, for good reason uh this is going to be uh the first of many of these things that we go through in this uh orchestration of this war on terror as well as the orchestration of a huge war coming up uh <clears throat> and i may add this uh the reason I want to talk about Paris again is that, uh, again, every time one of these things happens, here's what I do. I spend time watching uh, the initial coverage of this event as they've covered, similar to Boston bombing, etc., etc. And then I, I marvel at how quickly they get all this information, and I marvel at uh, how then it's presented to people. Uh, how martial law in France was established, how people were running for their lives the next day when they heard a car backfire, uh, how people were at a cafe the next day uh, having coffee with police guarding, etc., etc. Uh, I watched the news footage for two days, and I do that purposely so that I can see if I can see any blood anywhere. And I never can. I'll occasionally see a little bit here and there. But on these events, it is amazing to me, the same pictures are shown day in and day out. You would think with all these news agencies and wanting to get the story out, getting readers to look at their news, you would get more than a handful. It's the same shots, the same people talking. And as I said earlier, what will happen then is you're going to go the next even that evening when it happened, there were already people posting that it was a false flag event, and uh, then they were starting to compile that information. Now, two days or three days later, this the false flag information gets a little bit more in depth. People that aren't on mainstream news get a chance now to look at this and start saying it's a false flag event. Here's what uh, I say. I've been through information regarding 9-11. It didn't happen the way they said it. And I can prove that by spending two years covering uh, a lot of factual things that never made any sense, a lot of evidence that was concocted, a lot of things. And I came to the conclusion that it was orchestrated. Fine. But what was the conclusion of most people in the world? The conclusion was it was as the government said. So the point of view here is that really the only people that the world, you know, in the world that seem to believe these conspiracy theories, and that's when I say this Boston bombing, 9-11, and now the Paris attacks, and we can talk about uh, Charlie Hebdo, Hebdo and the rest of these things that are going on, uh, and say, listen, they, you just, it just don't make sense. I mean, the facts, it sounds good. The media is right on it. You know, it's amazing to me. Again, in the in the uh, Paris attack, they found a uh, passport or something of one of the, supposedly it's a Syrian uh, refugee. Now that thing, if the guy blew himself up or killed, that, I mean, how did they find these things? They found a passport too, remember, of one of the Arab terrorists. How did they, do, you know, people believe this stuff. And that's just the tip of the iceberg on a lot of this stuff. Now, the point I'm trying to make is the only people, when I start saying, listen, I can say this. Okay, let me make a point. The government orchestrated 9-11, the government or and the Vatican behind it, and all of the PSYOPs organized this to further the New World Order and to basically uh, take away our rights. Now, back then, the Patriot Act was written prior to 9-11. Now, does that make sense to you? Well, then you go to, let's just use three, Boston bombing, and you start showing how that was orchestrated. And then you go to Paris and you say that is orchestrated as well now to basically 
build the war on terror. So the war and chaos continues all over the West. You know, the Muslims are fighting the Christians, and the Christians happen to... Well, why aren't they going to the head of the largest supposed public Christian organization? Now, we know they're not, but they tell us they are. They should be attacking the Vatican. Those are the guys, but they don't. In fact, in the Caliphate five-year plan, they give you a map as if they, you know, who are these guys? I mean, they're, 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 they have a lot of money. Where do they get it? From the West. They have a lot of tanks. They have a lot of Humvees. They have a lot of heat-seeking missiles, a lot of organization. Where do they get it? From the West. They're computer savvy. How do they do this? They put out plans and show you maps of what they want to do in the next five years, taking land all the way from Spain to uh, China. But in their map, they leave out Italy. They take all the other countries, but Italy is left out. And a guy who reported on this said it, and gave a good reason. They said, this is command central. <laughs> and I agree with him. But if we say it is orchestrated, but people were killed. Let's say 3,000 people were killed in 9-11. Let's say the people were actually killed in the Boston bombing. Let's say the people were actually killed at all these school shootings. And we say it's orchestrated. And let's say all these people killed in Paris. And we say it's orchestrated. It is a plan. Okay, they feed terrorism. They pay these people to go in there and, and kill themselves and kill others. That, to many people, is outlandish and considered a conspiracy theory. But when I go and say, listen, there's facts showing that in many of these things, none of these people were even killed. And then they go, wow, this you're really off your rocker. But it seems the only people that really get this, that really understand, and I'm going to use the word conspiracy theory, uh, the theory of conspiracy theory of history, not only these events, are those who've studied it. And there are so few people who want to study this stuff. They're content to take the government story and run with it. And the, and the government knows that. And the Vatican knows that. And I showed you in a couple other shows just recently how a Jesuit priest named Father Dal Oglio was an instigator of war in Syria, and he has been for years. That's just one example of how the Jesuits do this. So the only people are really going to believe that are those who study it. The majority of the people are not going to ever get this. So what I'm saying to you is, okay, I enjoy, well, put it this way, in kind of a uh, enjoy, it's right out in front of you. You have to take this. They put this in, you know, they're running this, they're running with this story that's going to lead to more terrorist attacks here in America. But I want to go and say this, that they are orchestrated in a way where terrorism is fomented because people really, and even Hermann Goering said this for, in the Hitler administration, or in, yeah, in the Hitler um, time, he said, most citizens and all citizens, most citizens do not want to go to war, whether they be Chinese, American, German, French, they will not, they don't want a war, they want to live peacefully. But they can always be instigated to into it by uh, a government who fo foments that war. And they will follow the lead. And that's exactly what happens. So what's the end game here? Is it just, you know, one after another, they're going to have a, these soft spots hit and make people believe that, you know, 100 people are killed, 100 here, 100 there. No, they're taking away it. This is going to be a conflict that's going to grow into a war, which what they want, where actually people on the battlefield are going to get killed. Now, as far as these false flag events, whether they're false flag or not, I say it's for us who look at it. Of course, it is a topic of discussion, but that's amongst uh, such a few, you know, so few people that it amounts to basically like me calling a meeting and saying in the, in the city of uh, San Diego or in Chicago and say, okay, all the people in Chicago that want to talk about this as a false flag, come to this meeting and I'll get 20 people out of 3 million. 
So the point I'm trying to make is most of those 3 million people in Chicago or in San Diego or in L.A. or in Paris or wherever are going to believe that terrorism is being fomented by an extremist Muslim group who somehow has organized itself into what is now being called the Islamic State and is going planning to take over most of Europe, all the way from Spain to China, of course, leaving out the Vatican. And they won't go any farther and try to figure out, well, who's, where are they getting all this? Where is this coming from? And you have to go back into history to see that how they've done it before in certain things like the French Revolution, the American Revolution, etc. But the point that I'm trying to make here is that let's forget about that little meeting of 20 people and we talk about all the things that show us there's a false flag, all the things that show us that maybe actually terrorism was orchestrated and actually these people were killed. That discussion means very little, whether it is a orchestrated event where nobody was killed and the media lied and said they were, or that 300 people or 120 were killed in Paris. The people believe it happened. Majority of people believe it happened, so the discussion that we're having in this small meeting has very little meaning to those people. And in fact, many people look at that as saying, oh, those, those guys are the tinfoil hats. Those are the guys, they don't know what they're talking about. So the point I'm trying to make is let's, for, you know, I, I believe in looking at this and trying to get all the facts. And if facts show you that it's really didn't happen that way, it's even more evidence that they've orchestrated this. How could they do this? That's always the question. And I love trying to figure them out because that is in my uh, genes to kind of investigate everything to the core. But I also understand that most people really don't believe it. They don't even believe, nine, most people don't even believe 9-11 was an inside job. I find it interesting that maybe five years after 9-11, there were 50% of New York, the people that lived there, believed that it was a government inside job. Let's not even get into Cardinal Spellman from New York and the Vatican's role in this. But uh, in, the, in the rest of the country, those numbers waned. They were, very, they were few and far between, and as the years go by, less and less people, even in New York, will even remember what happened. So they, they're going to immediately tag on to the government story. And many of those who thought it knew it was a government inside job have given up. So now here we are with this you this terrorist. And Friday the 13th, I haven't seen anybody write about this. I'm going to do a story next week. Has a great significance in uh, also French history. And uh, that has to do with the Knights Templars and a whole bunch of things. So you should understand that they picked this date for a reason. And we'll get into that. And then people, again, unless you study it, they're not going to believe you. But remember what Franklin Delano Roosevelt said. He was one of your presidents, right? He said, nothing in politics happens by accident. It, is, it happens if because it was planned that way. But Remember, Carol Quigley, Bill Clinton's favorite professor at Georgetown University, <laughs> Jesuit Georgetown, boldly admitted in his Tragedy and Hope, 1966, that a multitudes were already on that multitudes were already under the control of a small but powerful group bent on world domination. Quigley himself, Clinton himself, was part of that. So is the Vatican. So is Georgetown at the higher levels, etc. So we know it exists. But then people start going, and we're going to do this again on the Internet. Now, most people don't believe. They start, well, who are the people in power? Who are the ones here? And they'll go, Skull and Bones, CIA, Mossad, the British, uh, the bankers, everything else but the, but the Jesuits. And I tell you right now, all roads lead to Rome. So looking at this from another perspective, if you don't think your government is fascist, even though they say they're democratic, but 
the emblem of fascism is right there. It's a pair of them. Fasci are the Roman symbols that they used back in Rome of their fascist state. And the emblem of fascism is, is right on the wall above. There are two of them behind the speaker's rostrum in the chamber of the house. And that was the, put there in the 40s. They called fasci. And there's no reason for them to be there except them showing you we are a fascist state. Now it's an axe head whose handle is a bundle of rods tightly strapped together by a red sinew. It symbolizes the ordering of priestly functions into a single infallible sovereign. That's what it means. That's why it's there. That's why the Pope was there speaking. Get it? If the fascia is entwined with laurel, like the pair of the house wall in your, in your house of representatives, it signifies Caesarian Caesar's military power. The Romans called this infallible sovereign Pontifus Maximus. Guess who's Pontifus Maximus now? He just spoke. Pope, ben, Pope what's his name? Francis just recently spoke there, right between those fasci. That's why. What? You don't question that? No, nobody does. Oh, that's a pretty little bundle of uh, bundle of uh, ferns. That's all it means. Well, listen, we got a couple minutes here, and I wanted to touch base. Like I said, I look at all these things now, and we are going to, first of all, I found a journalist. Uh, I believe he's an Irish journalist, and uh, I don't believe he gets much into the false. I get He talks about the orchestration going on in Europe, which is really good for you to hear. Second half hour, I am going to play uh, some what happened at that cafe in in Paris and when you see the pictures it's it's amazing uh, how somebody could blow themselves up and the windows don't shatter or there's no blood anywhere it's beyond beyond belief but that's what happens because you see only certain little pictures they play the same things and now when a, a guy goes out there and he was there and he has a camera and don't you think they watch remember how they confiscated all the photos and the people and were killed around the Kennedy assassination in the 60s well, anyway, let's look at this. And this is a journalist. He's a political author named uh, Gerard O'Colmain. Sounds Irish. He's talking about what happened in France. Let's listen to what he has to say. It's very, it's fairly good. It's ten minutes, and I'll play most of it, and then we'll we'll shove it over into the second uh, half hour once I get this thing running. And here we go. Well, let's now talk to political journalist and author Gerard Coleman, who joined us from Paris this evening. Thanks very much for joining us again on RT International. You're in the French capital. What's the mood and atmosphere in the city right now? We're being told that there's a state of war uh, and a state of emergency. Uh, this We've had this before. We had this in January, and for several weeks we had non-stop sirens and uh, non-stop chatter on the radio about the uh, threat from uh, radical Islam and uh, terrorist groups and so on. And so we're having a kind of a replay of that, but it has been, I think, accentuated, and we're going to have an intensification of the uh, media campaign, which is essentially a propaganda, a propaganda campaign to make people in France uh, fear uh, Muslims. Uh, we need to be clear about uh, the origin of the war on terror. The, the war on terror is, uh, I quote, orchestrated from abroad. These are the words uh, François Hollande used to describe this terrorist attack. Well, the attacks that have been uh, continuing to destroy Syria to uh, massacre its population have also been orchestrated from abroad. They were orchestrated by NATO and they've been carrying these attacks out against the civilian population of Syria for four years now. And this is a terrorist campaign that is also orchestrated from abroad. And people in Europe need to understand that there is a war uh, that is becoming global that is being waged against civilian populations in particular. It is a form of uh, neo-imperialism, neo-colonialism, which uh, aims to divide and conquer uh, European and uh, Middle Eastern and African and the world's population, for that matter, um, and to, to make them submit to a global order that uh, does not serve the interests of most of the people on this planet, but that does serve the interests of a very uh, few uh, ruling um, 
elite, a uh, very small, tiny, and particularly tyrannical ruling elite. There is no war on terror. There is a war uh, that is being waged using uh, proxy groups, terrorist proxy groups, and they are being used against uh, nation states who are resisting uh, US and uh, Israeli hegemony, and they are also being used as, uh, as a means of disciplining uh, the workforces in Europe. In a period of uh, mass unemployment and austerity, you now have uh, terrorist attacks being committed by terrorists funded, armed, and trained by Western intelligence agencies. There is no such thing as ISIS. ISIS is a creation of the United States. We know that from official sources of the US military themselves. Uh, declassified documents from the Defense Intelligence Agency have confirmed that. And the French are now, the French government is now attempting to drum up support for more military intervention in Syria. And what they want to do is they want to get in on the game. The game is almost lost. The Russians have routed much of the Islamic State. You now have Islamic State militants coming into Europe uh, disguised uh, as refugees. Uh, that will destabilize uh, Central Europe. And the French uh, government wants to, uh, to, to get in on, on the game in Syria and prop up those so-called moderate rebels. There are no moderate rebels, of course, in Syria. There are uh, Al-Qaeda and ISIS militants, terrorists who have been beheading people, eviscerating people, uh, absolutely creating chaos and genocide right across the region. And this does not serve, uh, this does not serve the Syrian people or, or, or anyone other than the Western corporate elites and their geopolitical interests. What would you expect France to do now in the light not only of Friday's terrorism, but 10 months on from Charlie Hebdo? It's not going to ease up on what it's doing, is it? No. Uh, the, 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 look, the, the, this uh, it, it much depends on how the French public will react. Whether they, if they will, uh, we are being bombarded now with a uh, media propaganda campaign. There's this non-stop talk uh, where we're told not to go out in the street. Uh, we're supposed to be fearful and and, and keep quiet and so on. Um, I think there is going to be a campaign against dissidents in France. They're very worried about um, the new media that has emerged in recent years, and they are very. Um, worried about the alternative media so I think there you will see uh, we saw this actually after the uh, attacks in January you will see a conflation of terrorism and uh, dissidents so uh, one of the tools which uh, the media the mass media uses to discredit any kind of rational questioning of the established order and particularly the war on terrorism is to uh, deride those who would question the war on terrorism as conspiracy theorists and I think you're going to see a crackdown on so-called conspiracy theorists and websites that actually uh, publish rational and honest analysis of what is happening. So you're going to see more of that type of intellectual terrorism, which is already at a boiling point in France. I mean, it's got to the point now where you have um, professors um, in universities who are being intimidated. You have school. Okay, and we're going to get back to uh, Mr. Colmain. Right after this break, and I wanted to, man, we got about five minutes more. I think what he's uh, what he's trying to show you. I mean, it's the same thing's going to happen here or is happening here in America, and I think he's giving a fairly decent analysis of uh, without dealing whether it's a fault, you know, whether people were actually killed, whether it was a setup, or whether um, uh, you know people weren't killed. Believe it or not. Uh, so we're not going to de deal with that, but it did happen. So let's see uh, what he has to say in the second half hour on the investigative journal. You're listening to FirstAmendmentRadio.com worldwide. Freedom is never free. We need your support today at FirstAmendmentRadio.com. The program you are listening to is 100% sponsored by you, the listener, on this First Amendment rights media channel. You will notice that there are few commercials on this radio network. There's a good reason for that. Corporate advertising dollars come with strings that limit program content. So without your help, these programs cannot continue on Internet or our several affiliates. If you benefit by the educational law programs, we ask you to give. If you are admonished or nurtured by the Bible and ministry programs, we ask you to give. 
If some voice a cause that you are passionate about, we ask you to give. If you believe in any of these, we ask you to support them as you would a missionary on a continual basis, as if giving a tithe for Missionary Radio. These programs are not commercially viable and must be supported by those faithful to the cause of truth. Look for the button to sponsor your favorite programs at our Listen and Schedule pages on the Internet. Then, when you subscribe, we will send you the last quarterly MP3 CD of that program immediately and continue to do so with each new quarter. We will also give you unlimited archive access to all of our programs. We're asking you to give much less than a tithe so that you may also send support directly to a particular program host, cause, and anywhere else the Spirit may lead you. Do all to the glory of our God and Creator, for His holy nation, the only kingdom that will last forever. Thank you for listening. Since the beginning of time, kings have sought it, nations have fought for it, it has been traded, it has been borrowed, it has been purchased, it has been stolen, there's a reason for it. To secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and to our posterity, invest with the security of gold and silver. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188 or visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net. Listen to Financial Survival with your host, Melody Cedarstrom, right here on FirstAmendmentRadio.com at 4 p.m. Eastern or 1 p.m. Pacific Time. Visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net or call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, 1-800-375-4188. Okay, we're back on the second half hour on November 18th, 2015 day, this Wednesday on our calendar. And, uh, you know, let's just get right down to the point here. Uh, this has, these these events that go on like this, this Paris attack, is just another in a long string of things that have gone on for hundreds of years. And it is my hope that people will begin to see that this war on terror has been orchestrated by we'll just use the elites, I call them the Vatican-led New World Order, using politicians as their puppets, all working together uh, on the top to basically destabilize countries, uh, take away the freedoms of people from Europe, America, all over the world, and uh, turn it into a, a world that they can control. And that's really, that's my hope, and I hope people start seeing that they're using these terrorist events by creating the terrorism themselves and that was my first hope my second hope is that when guys really do the homework and start checking out each one of these attacks including uh you know the the schools uh, sandy hook the rest of those uh, the boston bombing a number of these false flag events i think uh, that my second hope is that people will realize that maybe these things are being that not as many people are being killed as they say and these are orchestrated media events and that should my hope is that that gives you even more evidence that you're being manipulated and duped by not only the Vatican led New World Order your government leaders but by the media that's very powerful working for them so we have people like all these guys, Shepard on uh, Shep, whatever his name is, on Fox. Uh, we have Anderson Cooper and that a lot of people, all making millions of dollars. Uh, Wolf Blitzer, what a name! <laughs> is that a cool <laughs> that Wolf Blitzer? Is that you think that's his real name? Sounds like a a, a German uh, or a Jap, you know, it sounds like a German SS agent. But he's the guy out there with gray hair giving you the truth. He's not. He's been paying millions of dollars to hide it. And that's my hope. My hope is that we uh, can really see the light instead of this constant barrage of propaganda that is really it's starting to annoy me, to be honest with you. You know, it's the same, like he was saying, Mr. Colmain was saying, 
you know, they're, they're, they're orchestrating propaganda on high levels. They'll do it here. They've done it here. You're frightened to go outside. People don't want to talk to people. You go and you say hello to a stranger, they think you're going to murder them or something. And that's what they want, fear. And they're going to do it at higher level. It's going to go on and on and on. Now, one thing I want investigators to look at, if there's any young investigators out there with the time, especially in California, check out, I think her name is Nahemi Gonzalez. She's a 23-year-old design student, a senior at Cal State Long Beach, and she was supposedly killed. And there's a big memorial service being held uh, for her, and etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, let's find out if she really was killed. Okay? I mean, it shouldn't be too hard. Let's find out, you know, maybe uh, she's not. That would be a good place to start here in America. There's another guy that's from Palm Desert. He was on the, uh, he was a roadie from that band playing in the music venue that was supposedly, uh, if you listen to the reports there, if these guys were shooting 15 and 20 minutes at a time, they should have killed more than 100 there. They could have killed 1,500. I mean, give me a break. And they were saying that they reloaded two or three times. I did not see any any inside shots. And I bet you that place was cordoned off so nobody got in there. So nobody could really see what went on in there. And sure, you could scare people to hell to run out of there. And then you could have a few people that were playing uh, the CIA SAP roles of getting hurt, etc., etc. And I saw the same 10 to 12 shots on that scene alone, that play every day, every day. Same, same thing. Uh, that's not immediate to me. If you guys got so much money, millions of dollars, you got cameramen, you know, you should be able to get some real shots of what went happened and different ones. It's it kind of reminds me of the moon. You know, what they showed, they've shown the same picture of the Earth since uh, supposed Apollo. I mean, it's ridiculous. Now, let me just make an aside here. Now they even say they can't get through the Van Allen belt, even though they got through it 40 years ago. Now, check that story out. And it's insane what NASA tells us. And I just thought I'd uh, bring that up for a minute. But let's get back to uh, Mr. Colmain. Teachers uh, who are basically uh, being fired for even suggesting that there may be a link between French imperialism and terrorism. There was one case recently, for example, of a, a school teacher who uh, almost lost his, lost his job when he suggested there might be a link between uh, French foreign policy and terrorism. So you, we are going through a period of uh, deep uh, intellectual terrorism. And of course, these uh, these random terrorist acts, which are a form of low intensity uh, civil war. I think that the current crisis, the refugee crisis, which is really a form of coercive engineered migration, because it could have easily have been prevented. This form of coercive engineered migration is going to make this a lot worse, and it is going to create the conditions of civil war. It is a natural consequence, of course, of globalization, of financial capitalism. This is essentially what it leads to. I mean, it leads to a breakdown of society. And the only way in which they can kind of keep everybody down is by a policy of divide and conquer. So you're going to see a situation where you've got a very much a Wahhabized working class in France. They're being Wahhabized by the allies of the French political elite, the Saudis and the Qataris. They're building Wahhabite mosques all over the place. Uh, and that is going to Wahhabize the youth and they're going to be then used as pawns, if you like, in much bigger geopolitical wars, wars, proxy wars wars against Russia, proxy wars against Iran and the Middle East and so on. And that is going to create massive social unrest. It's going to divide working people uh, against each other. And uh, the only people who are going to actually benefit from this are the war contractors, the military industrial media intelligence complex. So in a, whatever way you look at this, I don't know who exactly did, uh, committed this attack and this atrocity, but uh, the real people who are responsible, whether directly or indirectly or consciously or unconsciously, is the French government because they have been complicit they in terrorism in the Middle East and all over Africa. And that needs to be understood. And if we don't understand that, this is going to continue and it's going to deteriorate. We will find ourselves in a situation under military uh, military uh, law, martial law, if this I, continues. So it really the, needs to be analyzed and understood. Can I pick you up on the issue of migrants and refugees? Because one of um, the terrorists appears to have been 
um, a French citizen, another a recent migrant to the country. What do you think this will do to France's policies towards the migrant crisis? Well, I think there is sufficient evidence to suggest strongly, in fact, that the current crisis, I mean, the, 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 the migration crisis is something that is ongoing, and there are different waves. You've got uh, different waves coming up from Libya, you've got the ones coming up from Syria and up through the Balkans. But the current re kind of refugee crisis, as it were, is um, what uh, I would refer to as coercive uh, engineered migration. This is a term used by Kelly Greenhill, a U.S. academic, who wrote an interesting book on this, uh, whereby she shows that... Uh, migration can be used as a tool from by one state to destabilize another state. In this case, it's definitely being used by the United States and Turkey to destabilize the Balkans, uh, Middle Europa, which would be uh, Hungary, and of course Germany. And the reason, the geostrategic reasons are this, are basically go back to classical uh, geopolitics, which is Har Halford McKinder's theory uh, of the world, of dividing the world island. That is to say, you divide uh, the Eurasian Peninsula uh, from the Baltic Sea to the Black Sea you create an intermarium there so that you prevent German and Russian unity and that is why Germany essentially is being uh, kind of overrun with, with people who are themselves uh, victims of globalization, but they are now being instrumentalized and used as weapons of globalization. And this is one of the key uh, contemporary strategies of U.S. imperialism. You use the consequences of globalization as further tools to further globalization. And um, I think there is not going to be, there is no policy in Europe to 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 control uh, immigration or anything like that. I think that the, the key the key question here is not actually controlling immigration. The key question is stopping this geopolitical destabilization of Europe uh, and uh, some countries are attempting to do that. Hungary is attempting to do, do that. Bulgaria is attempting to a certain extent to do that. Um, in other words, trying to find out who's an actual refugee and who isn't. They're prioritizing women and children, for example, in Hungary. Um, that's a rational approach. But of course, yeah, it, Viktor Orban of Hungary has been demonized by the European Union for his insistence on implementing the uh, laws of the European Union of, and of a Hungarian nation state. Here, you're you're in a situation where the French government is totally uh, uh, subordinate to U.S. dictates. This is a country that has been completely taken over by U.S. imperialism, just as Germany. And France doesn't really have a foreign policy. It does okay. whatever Washington tells it to do. Okay, it's um, always good to get your thoughts on this. Gerard O'Connor, thanks for Okay, and so, you know, what I was going to mention, I enjoyed his comments Uh Regarding this orchestration of imperialism, terrorism, there is no war on terrorism. Uh, pinpointing who did, who is involved, uh, I go a step farther, and you have to look to Rome. And the reason I say that is because of the recent uh, information that even the caliphate, even the people in ISIS, are giving you that they're they're looking at all these countries, but they're leaving Italy out. So. Uh, People always say, Greg, where's the safest place in the world to go? And I was always saying, well, there is no safe place. But according to, um, if you believe the reports they're doing, go to Italy. Maybe that's the safest place. I lived there for seven years when it wasn't that safe, when there was a lot of a terrorist attacks. Uh, in fact, I was in a bombing when uh, before Reagan came. They, uh, there was a bomb went off. I happened to be in the building. Uh, it was incredible. Uh, so what I'm getting at is maybe Italy's the safest place to go if they're not going there. If they're gonna, if you look at the map of the Caliphate, check it out. That's just an aside. But I go step a little farther, than Mr. Colman, and I respect a lot of his his thinking there. But we have to look further than just these politi geopolitical like France is in the pocket of the United States. Of course they are, but. The point is, who's orchestrating this whole thing at the top? It surely isn't Barack Obama and the, and the people that we have in office. They couldn't put together a, uh, a county fair, let alone this. So they got people smarter than them telling them what to do. And uh, if you look at some of Obama's advisors, it, they're, they're selected uh, for a reason. And most of them have, a lot of them have uh, Muslim ties. And in fact, one, so a woman in here does some, uh, one of her, his top advisors, I just read something. She, in 1977, seven, 1977, graduated from Stanford and said that uh, the idea that what she was looking for was to make America more Islamic. Well, you know, 
America's a melting pot of America. Can't everybody, you know, you can have a few. I mean, come on. This is an orchestrated effort to destabilize countries, like he said. And I go to the step to show you that it's going to come from Rome. And we got to talk about that. And we got to see in America, especially. I mean, where was this big mass held? Yeah, you know, did, did you see that right after this? They were, they were mourning. They all went to the Cathedral de Notre Dame, the Catholic um, cathedral there, to uh, have a big, huge mass. Okay, they orchestrate it, then they sell it, then they uh, uh, say how sorry they are that this happened uh, and use it to their benefit. That's what you've got to look for to figure this out, their benefit. Well, he didn't touch on whether this actually occurred, whether all these people are actually killed like they say. So go. let's go one step farther and look at that. And now a few videos and a few thoughts are coming out on that. I found one that... Uh, talks about the SIAP hoax, the cafe suicide bombing scene, uh, these forensics experts exposed. Because when you look at this cafe, and I may stop it because I'm going to look at the pictures, uh, it's amazing. I don't see any, any no, this, this, it couldn't have been an explosion there. All these people killed there. If it's so, it looks so sanitized. And don't you think Journalists would get the inside picture to sell newspapers to, to show you the broken windows, the blood all over the place. But you don't see that. And there's got to be a reason for that. So let's look at now. We're going to move forward and go, okay, now we know it's orchestrated. But did it really happen the way they say it happened? Were all these people really killed? And somebody, please check out if that, woman, that girl, Naomi Gonzalez, was actually killed. She's from Cal State Long Beach. They should be bringing her body back. And uh, there should be, you know, and that's, is it going to be a closed casket? How was she hit? You know, all of these, I remember some of these, they are from uh, Sandy Hook and all that. You never saw anything. And the one funeral you saw was a closed casket. Now, was she just uh, shot in the heart so that, I mean, uh, is it a closed open casket? What What is going on? Somebody's got to check out her family, check out who she really is, if it happened. And I only say that because so many of these things to me have been orchestrated that I have doubts about it all. I, I'm in fact trying, not trying to, you know, can you imagine when they put out the story and the mother's on, and when her mother spoke, she was Hispanic, uh, Another time, she looked. She, it looked a bit manufactured to me again, like they all do. We've made a few videos on this subject. What happened in Paris, France? The supposed terrorist attack was nothing more than a sign of psychological operations, trauma-based mind control that completely controls the masses. People with good intentions, with good hearts, but sadly deceived by these liars. Those that own and control this world that want to enslave us are taking a look at these supposed forensics experts looking at the remains of a supposed suicide bomber. Now here's the issue. With all the people that supposedly were killed, and what do you see? Little to no damage to this cafe. I'm going to show some images of real suicide bombers in restaurants and cafe and let's compare the footage this is completely ridiculous how people buy this nothing about this is real oh you see a couple of chairs pushed to the side no blood anywhere nothing about this is real people milling around smoking a cigarette at a crime scene did you see that did you see that? Take, let's take a look here for one second. A forensics expert is smoking a freaking cigarette. Okay, and this reminds me of what they did at Sandy Hook. And if he, what he's trying to show you is this picture of this cafe, these guys milling around, it, and there's no blood anywhere, a few chairs thrown down, a couple black body bags with nothing in it, and nothing on the sidewalks. It's incredible. What garbage.
garbage. This is nothing but a joke. Not, and how people can't see through this is beyond me. Complete joke. Let's continue with the video footage. Where's the blood? Suicide bomber, there should be blood everywhere. People took the time to look at actual footage of suicide bombers. Real footage, you're going to see blood everywhere. There is none. Because nobody died, nobody got hurt, period. Entire cafe. Oh, two chairs pushed over. Two coffee cups. Okay, and this is the cafe where supposedly Naomi Gonzalez, the 23-year-old uh, design student senior from Cal State Long Beach, was killed. There's got to be a couple Americans killed, right? To uh, spread the story around and get the sympathy and the fear. But let's find out if she, you know, and I'm not trying to denigrate or to make fun of her family, but come on. This cafe looks like somebody was cleaning it inside and putting the chairs outside. That's it. Of a table. Complete garbage. You live in such a dumbed down society. Well, let's take a look at actual footage. This is from Morocco. I'm a real suicide bomber that did real damage to a cafe. Yeah, when you see this, go to this guy's video. This is good. Uh, it's at uh, the Matrix Exposed. Uh, Paris, France, terrorist attack, PSYOP, PSYOP hopes. Now he's showing a picture of a terrorist bomb, you know, a bomber in Morocco where it really happened. And oh my God, you can see the difference. You see the difference? Can you see the difference? We got these two chairs pushed over. That means a bombing happened. Right, take a look at this. World of difference. Now let's take a look at more footage of real suicide bombers. Here you go, another restaurant. Real damage. What happened here was nothing more than a firecracker, if that. A firecracker would do more damage than this. Complete joke. More footage here. Now here's here's something right here. A suicide bomber on a bus. This news story never received 24-hour coverage because it was real. It was not scripted, part of the world stage. You hear about it, you make it on the news, and the story will disappear. This did not affect people worldwide. Again, people can't see the difference. Open your eyes. Google cafe and restaurant bombings with suicide bombers. There are body parts everywhere. I can't show it in this video. YouTube will yank it. Just type it in Google, go to images, and you'll see... Real bombings taking place. And understand, with all these psyops, the whole has to revolve around Freemason. Like I said in my very first video concerning this psyop, you're going to see that number 33. And of course, here you go on this card. They didn't just take this picture by chance. There's your 33. Okay, and you're going to show some more 33s. Here's another one for the supposed bus crash that killed 42 people in France as well. That happened recently. There you go with the 33 again. So nothing more than psyops, nothing more than trauma-based mind control to instill fear in society. Real events happen. Real people die. When they spotlight things, you know it's a psyop. There you go again with your 33 in plain sight with this ambulance. People don't understand the 33. Explain it real quick. As I've done so many times. 33 is the highest degree in the Scottish Rite of Freemasonry. These are the ones... You know, and I was watching the other day, uh, there's a movie coming out called 33. Interesting. ...that own and control this world. All these leaders throughout this world are working together against us. The world's a stage. Taking a look again, supposed bus crash in France, and you'll see that number 33 again. This is their hoax code. Whenever you see that 33... You know it's a host. Sometimes that number 33 won't be so obvious. Sometimes they'll show that color orange. Because orange is the only color that is 33 in numerology. Now, let's take a step back here. With the Ebola hoax. It's affected people worldwide. People believe this is real. But somehow, this story just disappeared. You understand 
how the media, controlled by the shadow government, controls society through fear. And it just so happens, all these Americans that supposedly contacted the Ebola virus were 33 years old. This is complete mockery for the dumbed down masses that can't see the obvious. Bill Gates, one of the so-called elite, he states how this global pandemic could wipe out 33 million. How did he come up with that number of 33? I can tell you because he's one of them. He's a 33, 33rd degree Freemason. Another article here from RT News. Killer cost of Ebola. Rule bank wars. 33 billion doomsday scenario. What happened to Ebola? Just got up and walked away? People are so dumb. Here's Bill Gates. That logo, again, being a 33rd degree Mason. Right in his logo, you'll see that hidden 33. The majority of the masses will not see this because they have been blinded. You see his Microsoft Conference Center at 33. Bill Gates, after 33 years, retires from Microsoft. Just like David Letterman, all Masons, all 